Alrighty hosses, welcome back and in this video I want to talk to you guys about operations. Now an operation is how you can apply a mathematical formula and these are just going to be really easy mathematical formulas like um, adding two values together. But what you can do is you can instead of just like setting padding to 30 pixels you can actually have like 30 pixels and add another value. So why would you ever want to do that when you can just type the final value? Well, I'll show you guys why this is actually really powerful and also why it's very useful. So at first, I'm just going to make a generic button. So I'm going to have a variable called like button background. And this is going to have a value of like 16A085. And this is a cool little, I don't know, like turquoise color. And also for the text color, let me add another variable. Might make things easier. So button color, I'll just make white. And I'll set a default padding for the button. So button padding, I'll just add it five pixels right now. Why not? So I got three variables. So now let's actually start making our button class. So for the button, the background, of course, is going to be button background and the border radius. I'll give it a curviness of eight pixels. And for the color, this is the text color. We are going to use button color. And let me just uh, Display this is an inline block and add a couple other properties, two more. So for the padding, got to take care of that. This is button padding and text decoration. I'm just going to set to none. So just to make sure they don't have any weird underlines or anything like that. Now, actually, let me go ahead over my HTML file and show you guys a generic button right here. So Uh, let me just make it a dead link. It won't link to anything. I hate when it does that. It tries to auto fill it in for me, giving me a whole bunch of other stupid freaking whatever. All right, normal. And for the class, I'll just set this to button. So right now, this is a generic button. This is what it looks like. Pretty boring, but for this tutorial, good enough. Now. I also want to create different variations of this button. So for example, I might have a jumbo button. I might have a light button. So it's the same thing, but a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is something really cool through the use of operations. So we already know that since we're going to be using just variations of this, then whenever we make another class, it's probably a good idea to extend it so we don't have to type all those properties again. So for jumbo button, what I'm going to do is give myself a tidbit of more space is I'm first going to extend button. So E extend button. Now need to extend the button class. So whenever I do this, all I'm doing is I'm taking all of these properties and bringing them into here. So now jumbo button is identical to button. But since this is a jumbo button, it's probably a better idea to make it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the padding and I'm going to add a value to the default padding. So right now the default padding is button padding. But for my jumbo button, I always want to add an extra 30 pixels of padding. Now take note that whenever you use operations, you don't actually need to type 30 pixels. I mean, you can if you want to, but SAS is smart enough to figure out um, padding for the button, it's a uh, value in pixels. So when you add 30, you're obviously not trying to add, you know, 30 to like the color or anything like that. So another cool thing that I can do is this. Actually, I won't type that again. Not that lazy. So I'm going to make a light button. And this is also going to extend button so we get all those properties from the generic button however whenever i make a light button the one thing i want to do to this is i want to bump it down a shade so it's a tidbit lighter 
So for the background, I'm just going to take the button background, which is that regular turquoise background, and I'm going to multiply it by 1.5. Now, whenever you take a color and multiply it by something greater than 1, it brightens it up a little bit. Whenever you multiply it by something less than 1, it darkens it. So what this is going to do is give me a lighter button. And now let's just go ahead and see those right now. So this is normal. This is jumbo. And this last one will be the light button. Now I need to change the class to jumbo button and light button. And check this out. So I'm going to refresh this. And here's our normal button. Here was our jumbo button. And this is our light button. Now, another reason that people use these a lot is whenever you make a button that you hover over and it's a lighter shade, then what you can do is it's better instead of just, you know, going to some tool online and finding a lighter shade of that color is just to use a formula. And I'll show you guys why this is right now. So say that I want to change the color of this to 006699. Well then, whenever I refresh this, I automatically have my hover colors. So I know that I didn't add the functionality to when we actually hover over this button to change it to a lighter shade. But that way, all of the buttons on your entire website, they can change by the same shade whenever you hover over them. So whether you want it to change to darker or lighter, you don't have to worry about going and finding the exact value that you want to change it to. You just multiply the background color by some certain amount, depending on how much lighter you want it to be. And it's very, very handy in that way. So with the use of, you know, extend, mix in, you know, operations, we got a whole bunch of cool tools that we can use. And well, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. That is operations in SAS.